Ну что, друзья, переходим к третьей части. Well now, let's move on to the third part of our show. The idea is to make a photo noir. But first, let me explain what we mean by that. As you may know, the film noir has a very specific form of lighting. For example, instead of highlighting the main hero in order to draw attention to him, as you would for a classical portrait, he is allowed to melt into the overall composition. Then, by highlighting other elements in the picture, the film director can guide the attention of the viewer not only to the main hero, but wherever else he wants it. However, as today we are creating our portrait within a black cube, we can't follow the above-mentioned strategy, because there is no overall composition for our model to melt into. But we can follow the same style. In this way, we will not only have a photo noir, but a mix of noir and the world-famous Hollywood portrait. Actually, the Hollywood portrait is just a classic portrait in a noir style. It's quite a funny story. These portraits are very famous, and they achieve this thanks to their lighting technique. Of course, I can't be 100% sure, but I would say their secret is that they use the hard light device and just shine the light through a shoebox with holes in it. And that's it, the whole secret of the Hollywood portrait. Of course, I may be wrong, but you should give it a try. I think it will be interesting. Anyway, we will use the following scheme. We want to make the light very patchy, with no logical pattern or rational emphasis, in order to create a kind of accidental light. In this way, we shall get a more vibrant photo than is usually found in classical photography. Let's see how we do this. Well, let's get to work. We have devices which are optimal for this type of lighting setting, as we need very accurate spots. These devices, which have a very high focusing range, are more than suitable for this task. We will also put on barn doors to make the light beam even more precise. This is the first device. As we won't be lighting specifically from the top or from the bottom, we will place the device somewhere in front of our model. However, we will use the light in an unusual way. Generally, as you know, we would first highlight the face, perhaps from top to bottom. But in this case, we will place the main light perhaps on her shoulder or on her collarbone, so that the face would only be lit indirectly, only by reflection, thus creating a kind of accidental light. Let's try it. First of all, we switch on the device and focus it as much as possible. But, as you can see, the light spot is still too big. So, we'll close the barn doors as much as possible in order to get just a narrow bar of light. And now, let's look at the face and change the direction of the light beam in order to get what we're looking for. Well, this would be a classical shot. 
But if we lower the light and direct the main light beam onto the shoulder and collarbone, it will look much more accidental. Maybe, in order to get more diffused light on the upper part of the face, we can lower the light a little bit. Thus, getting more of the diffused light on the face. I think the main light source can be set up like this. And now, let's think what else we can do. First, I think that we could highlight the model's hands with a separate light beam. Then, I also suggest adding another patch of light somewhere. Let's imagine that our model is sitting in the room during the daytime and the light shines through a chink in the window. There could even be several chinks through which the light could shine at odd angles. Some light effects like this would make our photo more realistic. So I think we need two other devices. The first, as I've already mentioned, would be for the hands. And the second would be for putting some light spot on the face. Oh, I almost forgot. If you look at the general shot now, you can see that due to the position of the light device, we not only got the effect we wanted, but we also cast our model shadow on the wall behind her. However, in this shot, the shadow can also be interpreted as someone else's shadow. Basically, this somewhat contradicts what we set out to do, as we had decided not to use the space. But I think for this particular photo, it's not out of place. We could, of course, avoid it by covering the background space with a dark curtain, which would reduce the shadow, but I suggest we keep it. Well now, let's look at the logic of what we're doing. Here, we are visually imitating daylight, so that it looks like the sun is shining through the chinks of a window. Therefore, all the devices that we need in order to create certain light spots or to highlight certain details should be set up more or less in the same place and point in the same direction. In other words, if we place the first light device in the front, then we should place the others in the front too. We can move them sideways a bit, but these small light spots won't make any difference to the shadow. But if they're too far apart, then the light would no longer appear to be coming from one source, which would seem illogical and unnatural. So we'll place the second device, which will highlight her hands, next to the first one. Let's see what we have now. We'll switch it on and focus it as much as possible. But the light spot is too big, so once again, we'll use the barn doors to confine the light just to her hands. Here, we don't need to highlight the dress, so we can place the light exactly where we need it. Now I think we need only one more little effect. That is, a small spot of light on her face. We can't focus the light sufficiently to create a small enough spot, so we'll use a projection attachment called the DP2. This is an attachment that has built-in shutter blades. Let's see how it works. It also has a built-in lens. We will now highlight the face and make it as focused as possible. We have only focused it to demonstrate what we're doing. We'll now reduce the size of the light spot with the shutter blades. 
Then we will defocus the lens to make it look more natural, and then decide where we're going to put it. I think we'll place it somewhere above her eye. We could also, of course, place it right on the eye. But as you can see, it looks rather unnatural to highlight only one part of the face, especially if it's an eye. So we will place a completely random spot right here above the eyebrow. Then we'll defocus the light somewhat and dim it a bit. And now I think we have something much more interesting. We can now move on to the photo shoot and see what we get. Altogether, we have used three light sources in this shot. The first was the main light, which we placed on the collarbone. The second was for highlighting the hands. And the last one we used for setting a small light spot on the model's forehead. Of course, we could have made a more elaborate setup and managed to create a more interesting atmosphere. But that was not what we were trying to do today. I wanted you to see that you can make a lot of interesting shots without any scenic background, just by working solely with the light. I want you to feel this creative mood and let you make your own shots, which will be much better and more interesting to discuss. If you have any ideas, please go ahead and send them to us. We will then discuss it later. Finally, I would like to thank our team for helping me to prepare this video course. Many thanks also to the very hospitable Look Studios. And many thanks to our model Maria, who was very patient today. And of course, many, many thanks to Lumi, who made this video for us. So, see you soon, stay tuned, and we'll have a lot more interesting things for you. Bye now. Let's sum up with the equipment we used during our lesson today. Our main device was a small focused halogen source Dado Light 150 watt. As modifiers, we used eight leaf barn doors. And we had a diffuser to soften the light. We also had the Sunbounce Silver Reflector and two projection attachments, DP1, DP2. And two Gobo masks. Today we won't have any... Oh, leave it as it was.